Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. How is everyone doing? So today we'll be looking at uh, chronometry, which is a topic in continuation of large amplitude control potential technique. So in this type of technique, we are using the same excitation signal for potential step and we see that initially we have this potential over here and as we discussed earlier for some time this potential remains same and then in an instant this potential is we say it is stepped to a value es and at this value es it remains same and sometime we continue to keep it same this way now while this is increased in an instant it lead to certain consequences so let's say if it remains same just if we are looking up to this part of the potential then we are talking about a single step technique but if we actually return it to an to a final position EF then we are talking about a double step technique so we will be looking at it uh, in coming slides so here is an example of how actually it looked like so you can see that it is the same diagram as was uh, as we saw just in the slide before we have uh, potential which is plotted versus time and we saw that initially it is going from here to this it is stepped from here to this es value and then it remains same and then it come come back to a final value so basically you are looking at a double step chrono amperometry so what is the result or consequence of that we can see that in the p part so what we see over here is that in an instant that is when the potential is stepped there is a sudden increase in the current where is that coming from that is where is that current coming from so basically when the potential is stepped then again this reaction which we are discussing initiates that is the formation of the reduced species from oxidized species due to heterogeneous electron transfer starts it ensues so once it started mean that suddenly all the oxidized species which is present on the electrode solution interface is converted into reduced species due to which there is a flow of current and as the concentration of this oxidized species is reduced so will be the current which is also reducing and this is between this time which is we called it top so now we are looking at two lines over here one is this solid line and one is this other line which is actually showing that how the how the response was measured when only the supporting electrolyte was present so you can clearly see that that the response which is measured is a true response which is coming out of the uh, of, from the reduction of this species O which is converted to a species R so in the in the step which is uh, the in case of the double step we are looking at this part of the graph also so if it is on the single step we will see just this type of the behavior as was observed in the earlier lectures so the a part show the potential excitation signal from the double potential step and the b part show the current time response signal or the chrono amperogram so here we are noting current uh, with time that how it is 
changing. So you can see that initially there is a sudden increase or instantaneous increase in current and then it exponentially decrease and then when it is potential is returned to the EF then there is a sudden decrease because here we assume that all of the reduced species is converted back into the oxidized species or a similar situation was encountered. So we have already discussed this part that what these two are showing. This is the background response which was observed during the initial experiment. Now if we look at the practical aspect, so we can see that practically there is this initial potential and this initial potential remains same in a part which is called the quiet time and after that it is instantaneously stepped up and after it is stepped up it remains so for a certain time which is a pre-estimated time and after that it is reduced to another value which is which was uh, designated EF in the last slide and then it remains so for a certain time. So if you look at these parameters for example in an instrument then it looked like this. So this is the initial potential and this is the potential in millivolts for the first step and then this is the potential for the second step and this show the quiet time which is designated as 2 seconds and the time for the first step is 100 milliseconds and the second step is also 100 milliseconds so you can see that practically this will look like uh, these values if you are doing the chrono impurometry or chrono coulometry because the uh, input parameters will be almost same for the chrono impero and chrono coulometry now during this process uh, electrolysis is taking place and that is based on this law which is the Faraday's law over here and Faraday's law says that charge is the charge is equal to the product of the number of electrons transferred multiplied by the Faraday's constant and then multiplied by the number of moles. So if we take the first derivative then with respect to time then the change in charge with respect to time give us current and obviously this is the differential of charge so it tells us that the current that we have over here is the instantaneous current since these two are constant while n is showing you the number of moles being transferred or that is being traveled or converted so we take the derivative of number of moles over here so this constant multiplied by the derivative of number of moles transferred per unit time so in that instant we can also see that from fixed law this it can be written as the nf that is the same constants multiplied by a area and d subscript o which is showing the diffusion constant of the oxidized species multiplied by partial co divided by partial x at x is equal to 0 to t or it is varying from 0 to t again it is instantaneous time and this is showing the partial derivative so one important parameter over here is do so what does it show that we are looking at a diffusion control reaction and then we have this concentration which is concentration profile of the oxidized species uh, at a certain distance this x is giving distance from the electrode and we already saw the concentration distance profiles 
uh, in a previous lecture of the same series. So here are few numbers over here and their units. I t is the current at time t and A is showing here amperes and is the number of electrons which is given in equivalent per moles and F is the Faraday's constant which is 96,485 coulombs per equivalent transferred and A is the electrode area in centimeter square. D subscript O is the diffusion coefficient of oxidized species in centimeter square per second and C O is the concentration of oxidized species in mole per centimeter cube. This is very important that the units that are used for concentration are not in moles per liter but in moles per centimeter cube. X is the distance from the electrode in centimeters and T is time in seconds. Now here we have this very important parameter over here which is the product of D subscript O multiplied by partial C O or partial X which we see over here. Now this product over here actually gives us flux and it is the flux or the number of moles of oxidized species which is diffusing per unit time to unit area of electrodes in units of moles per centimeter square per second. So this is an important parameter and will be used. Now if we look at this figure which is uh, again was discussed previously it is showing in fact, if you look at uh, our theory, it is showing a single step response, single step potential response. And we are looking at the oxidized species at x is equal to 0, it is decreasing, and that is, it means that at, as you go uh, away from the electrode, then the uh, slope of the oxidized species decrease it is initially high like for 1 millisecond is showing the maximum slope then the slope is a bit decrease and as we go to 10 millisecond the slope is even more decrease so as you as you, uh, with time the in the concentration distance profile the slope is decreasing. Now this slope is very important. We will see that. Now the current decays smoothly from an expected value of infinity at t is equal to 0 that is when it was maximum. So you can see that basically uh, it is the situation when all the when all the oxidized species was present and it was just at angle 90 so we said that it is the value of infinity at t is equal to 0 but as soon as the potential is stepped all of oxide oxidized species is converted into reduced species and then the situation is that there is maximum flow of current and afterwards it start to decrease that is the current start to decrease as we saw earlier and it is decreasing exponentially so at t is equal to 0 and approaches 0 with increasing time as described by a very important quartile equation for a planar electrode so all of the time that we are talking is about an polar uh, about a planar electrode so this term this slope over here at different times is giving us this important value and which is when multiplied with the diffusion coefficient will give you the flux. Now this is the Cotterell equation over here which is given the relation between instantaneous time and it is equal to uh, a constant multiplied by 
inverse of the square root of tan. So this, these two values that we look over here, in the quartile equation are very important and give us a lot of information. What information? It tells us about the reaction whether it is diffusion control or some other type of reaction. It tells us about that what is happening during the slow charging of electrode, what could be the possibilities. Then it tells us about the coupled reactions that we discussed uh, in the last uh, lectures that is actually in the end of the last chapter we discussed about the coupled reactions. So if we have non-planar electrodes then for example like if we have spheres or if we have cylinders then they exhibit an increase in the product IT one over two, we know that I is equal to K T minus one over two. So this implies that K will be equal to I T one over two. So at increasing time, uh, they exhibit an increase in this value, this product which should be otherwise constant when you are dealing with a planar electrode. Now in case of uh, planar diffusion, it can be closely approximated at short times. A common example is the use of HMDE and what we notice that if you keep the time short then the electrodes all of the electrodes will behave like if the diffusion is the same as happening on a planar electrode as the time increase the deviations from the constant will occur the time restriction for approximation of planar diffusion diffusion is determined for electrodes of different geometries by the time at which departure from this constant, this product is happening. So we already said that. In order to retain the relative simplicity of planar diffusion mathematics, it is desirable that the time should be restricted and should be measured beforehand. That is, if you already know that at what point it start to deviate, you can actually design the experiment accordingly for non-planar electrodes like HMDE. So it also tells, uh, give us the uh, evidence, the same product, this is, that is the same product give us evidence of the convection and it is coming from the positive deviations of this product. So positive deviations of this product it, it square root with increasing time tells us that convection in an electrochemical cell is taking place. Convection can be caused by external vibration or by density gradients created by local concentration differences resulting from electrochemical perturbation. The influence of external vibration can be largely eliminated by isolation of the cell with damped table and we will see that what is a damped table but at the moment <coughs> we should remember that we already discussed there were three modes of transportation and it was uh, the most important and usually that we see in these type of reaction is when we are looking at diffusion control reaction or the reactions which are limited by diffusion then if if there is if this is not happening and if convection 
come into play so it means that we are already deviating from ideality and it means that it the reaction should be stopped so let's say if they are not coming from density gradients and they are coming from external vibrations then it means that uh, some uh, strategy can be adopted for example this is a smart table which can actually assist in dealing with the external vibrations so it is actually equipped with the technology which doesn't allow the vibration or compensate the vibrations this one is quite you can say a very sophisticated table but there are other uh, tables which can be uh, used for uh, small external vibrations or you can say that uh, we should use a vibration free table so usually these tables are also used for optical measurements so this is quite a technology you see it actually help to improve your readings then we have the evidence of convection the same thing natural convection due to unequal densities of oxidized and reduced species this is something which is unavoidable and it will remain so it can be minimized if you already know the the species which are going to be used in the reaction the effect of natural convection at planar electrode is most serious when the surface is mounted vertically so this can be minimized by carrying out electrochemical experiments at surfaces facing up or down whenever possible now there could be problems in charging of electrodes as you saw that electrode must be charged before it uh, actually approach the step potential so the charging of electrode the problem in charging of electrode can lead to negative deviations of the product it square root and it show that variation in this product can signify low attainment of imposed potential slow attainment of the imposed potential by the electrode square wave input for a potential step experiment we already saw so let's say again this is if this is time and this is potential so what you see is so this is the square wave potential that we give as and give as input to the uh, potential state <coughs> Now charging of the electrode uh, to ES may lag significantly because of IR drop within the cell that is potential drop and it can be limited due to the potential state itself that is the potential state is not able to maintain the uh, potential that is required to keep the electrode at a certain potential or to charge it at a limited time the result of slow charging is diminished faradic current until the correct potential is achieved so in what we see that if it is proper experiment then when this part which was es is here then it actually is giving you uh, it is leading to this it that is that instantaneous current is there and basically what you see that uh, in terms of current is rise like this and then it slowly <coughs> it slowly uh, diminishes that is it gives a kind of exponential behavior but otherwise it is not going to happen it will be not giving this voltage or the transformation will not be taking place in complete form 
now this product can accordingly diminish in time during this time and uh, once the sufficient situation or sufficient uh, voltage step potential is achieved then the problem will be solved but obviously it will lag behind so the onset of the negative it square root deviation at shorter value of time is roughly characteristic of time required to achieve diffusion control so as we see that diffusion control was when the oxidized species have to cross the edl or should be present edl and then it is present at the electrode solution interface so now as much as the oxidized species cross from bulk solution in cross across the edl to the electrode solution interface then that much of the oxidized species will be converted into reduced species by taking up electrons so this is what the diffusion control mean over here as a point of reference charging times of the order of microseconds have been reported for optimized system at conventional electrodes that is you already know that how much time it take to achieve the potential that is required to convert all of the oxidized species on the electrode solution interface into reduced species and even shorter times at ultra micro electrodes which are tuned for uh, such type of processes now it is important that before we start experiment we have to standardize the response so for that firstly employ a redox system that is known to be reversible and free from the complications of the coupled chemical reactions and adsorption and there shouldn't be any deficiencies in the electronic and or cell design will thus be revealed before the critical experiments are begin so any of the reversible systems can be used which have a standardized response for example potassium ferry and ferrocyanide is a reversible couple which can be used in solid electrodes and similarly there are some other materials which can be or elements which can be used for hanging drop mercury electrodes or similar kind of uh, electrodes so applications of tronoamperometry it can be used to determine the diffusion constant determination of heterogeneous rate constants quantitative studies of homogeneous chemical reactions and determination of rate constants now you can see these details in your notes in your chapters and you can also uh, study the same in some research papers or the text which is available uh, online so what you need to do is to check which reversible system can be used to standardize response of solid electrodes and mercury electrodes in chrono amperometry especially the ones which are recently used and then you need to check uh, real chemical system from literature uh, where chrono amperometry is applied this addition chrono amperometry is applied for determination of various parameters so for now it is i think we'll stop here and you need to check these things and try to make some notes for yourself for these uh, important questions thank you and uh, talk to you soon